Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Machine Messiah, the newest album from Sepultura. Um, this is a weird album! Uh, it's Sepultura. Uh, I haven't actually listened to them for quite a few years, but it's just a Sepultura to me. Well, it wasn't really what I was expecting. I mean, I'm admittedly more familiar with their sort of bloody roots phase, so sort of, uh, okay... I thought this was Sepultura, not Sepultura, and every other metal and rock band there has ever been. <laughs> I mean, you can't deny that they go across the genres of metal and rock throughout individual songs, even. They seem to dance around quite a bit, yeah. yeah. Well, frankly, that's a good thing. I like my music when it changes things up a bit. Uh, I mean, the most varied track on the album, and... Probably my favourite on it is Iceberg Dances, which it's sort of like you can hear bits of System of a Down in it. There is Sepultura's signature style. You can hear bits of Yes in there. It's sort of like, okay, so who's playing this song? <laughs> I thought they came over and thought, hmm, do you know what we need? We need to just play a whole bunch of stuff that sounds cool and stick it together. I mean, as I say, I am not complaining. I've been waiting for an album that just really experiments with sounds. And this is the sort of thing that's right up my street. But it was what, when I first started playing the album, I was sort of like, is this Sepultura or a different band? <laughs> I mean, it grabs you right from the start. It does. Talking of starts, actually, the first song, the title track, is actually really interesting. I like it. Yeah. I think it might actually be one of my favourite songs on the album. Hmm. Maybe it's with Gajira a little bit, actually. Yeah, but not boring. <laughs> uh, I quite like Gajira myself, so I can't really comment. Uh, I, I, I just remember seeing them live and being thoroughly bored. I mean, to be <laughs> fair, I've never been that big into... Um, I, I suppose, would it be Doom Metal you'd classify them as, or...? I wouldn't necessarily think so. It's, it's kind of an element of Doomer, I guess, but mixed with tech death, mellow death, stuff like that. It's all over the place. Uh, but I, I've never been that big on straight up, sort of, well, on stuff like mellow death and whatnot. It, it, it always seems to drag on a bit. I mean, well, you know my opinions of Opeth. And, yeah. well, less said about that, the better. Otherwise, I'll end up on a whole different rant. But, uh, yeah, there, there were elements of sort of, like, it felt like um, Meshuggah at times. A little bit, although not quite as consistently crushing. Yeah, and also not as, um, I don't know when to headbang. Because uh, <laughs> that's what uh, Meshuggah does to you. You're sort of like, uh, do I headbang here or here? I, What do I do? <laughs> I think the total track has kind of... It feels kind of doomy, I guess, a little bit, simply because it's kind of much slower pace than I would expect. And being a big fan of doom metal, specifically as a subgenre, that pleases me. It's probably why it's one of my standout tracks. Yeah. Um... Also, the kind of whole concept of this album seems pretty damn cool as well. Mm -hmm. There's a whole kind of cyber god thing going on. Yeah. It's referenced quite a few different tracks. It's like, yep, the machines have taken over and they're like, way beyond us. Yeah. I mean, just in the titles, like, Resistant Parasites, Cyber God. Um, kind of curious as to what Al Alethea? Alethea? I'm not sure how it's pronounced. A-L-E-T-H-E-A. -E yeah, I don't know exactly what it is, but yeah, that looks up. Yeah. Um, uh. It's a name, apparently. Mm. But that's all what relevance it has to the particular album. Yeah. I, I just know that um, it, this there was not a point on this album where I felt like I was bored. Well, Alethea is a female given name derived from the Greek word for truth. Okay, that makes sense. That may well be a source. Mm. Uh, yeah, th this album was, for me, it was great from start to finish. Um, I would agree. There's nothing really stood out as being bad or boring or anything. It is a solid album. Yeah. There's nothing here I would say, I didn't like that. So that's generally a good sign. In fact, most of the tracks, I could go by and say, yeah, this is really fun. Yeah. Um, I, I suppose 
as I was saying earlier, um, if I was really to push it, I'd say that Chosen Skin is the weakest of the tracks. It's a bonus track, so a lot of how that kind of doesn't count as much, I guess. Yeah, and when I say it's the weakest of the tracks, that's one of those. If, if we're doing a, each track is a out of five rating, it would be a case of Chosen Skin would be a three out of five, whereas the rest of the tracks would be either four or five out of five. Yeah, I probably agree with that. I mean, the one track that didn't stand out as much for me is Vandal's Nest. Because mm. when I think back to the rest of the song, I can think of like little parts of each of the songs, apart from that one, which I kind of skipped over and just don't remember much from. Yeah. Also, one of the shortest regular tracks on the album as well, which might have something to do with it. Mm. Although, it's 20 seconds longer than I Am The Enemy, so... Yeah. But um, most of the tracks on the album are sort of four minutes plus, so you... Yeah, you get a bit of a chance for build-up. Hmm, like Sworn Oath being the longest does that very well, actually. Yeah. So this track is kind of six minutes long, but it felt like it wasn't six minutes long. Yeah. I was enjoying pretty much every part of it. It's like, yeah, this is really fucking cool. Yeah, it's the signifier of a great song when it's a good length, but it doesn't feel that way. It's like um, going to my um, wheelhouse and citing Devon Townsend. Whenever I listen to Bastard from Ocean Machine. That's about 10 minutes long. It never feels like it's 10 minutes long. Hmm, I get that quite a lot with uh, a lot of Devon Townsend, actually. Yeah. Like uh, Planet of the Apes, for example, comes to mind, as does Pixel 8, with which pretty long. Mm, they don't feel long. You know, some bands, you have like a song that's like four and a half minutes long and it feels like it's going on for forever. Yeah. Evile! <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess I've ever really listened to Evile, so... I... I... I saw them as support at a Megadeth gig. Um, I saw them a couple of times at Bloodstock. And the only reason the second time they actually sounded interesting for me is because they came right after Black Dahlia Murder. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's not a good idea. Yeah. It's, it's one of those, oh dear God. If you want Evile to sound interesting, you've got to listen to Black Dahlia Murder. I'm not willing to make that sacrifice. <laughs> but yeah, there's also quite a few songs on this album I listen to and think, this is a nice kind of atmosphere to it, and it's got really cool riffs and stuff. There's some pretty damn solid riffs on this album. Yeah. Guitar work in general, and the drum, actually drum work is very impressive as well. The drum is not necessarily the kind of thing that stand out that much in a lot of albums. Because you pick up on a certain album and think, this sounds really cool, I like these drums. Well, you've got to think, a lot of Sepultura's stuff is drum driven. I mean, um, oh, I can't think of, ah, uh, oh, it's called something like, I know someone is going to say in the comments section, sooner or later, the correct pronunciation or the correct title, but it's something like Ratama Hata. Um, it doesn't help that I only know normal Spanish. I don't know Brazilian. Well, that's Portuguese based, so even worse. I, I don't know Portuguese, and it's not going to be straight up Portuguese. It's going to be Brazilian Portuguese. I'm drifting. Anyway, <laughs> um, Ratama Hata, or something like that, is very drum driven. Um, there's various uh, Sepultura songs that are very drum based, and it sort of, it, it hits you like a thunderstorm. You know, you just get this very loud rumbling from the drums that really emphasizes the effect of the song as a whole. Hmm. I mean, like the opening to um, Chosen Skin, in fact, mm. just talking about it, that opening is very strong. Yeah. Pushing the rest of the song doesn't necessarily hold up as much as the kind of first like, half a minute or so, but mm. it's going to open the catch's attention. Uh, um, now, again, going for a bonus track, but the one that really stood out as different to me on this whole album, and I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about... <laughs> Ultra 7 No Uta. That was an experience. It's only a minute and 17 minutes, but in that short time, it's sort of like, wait, what? So, as. as Sepultura like singing in Japanese, I guess? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it, it was just sort of like, uh, wait, wait, 
What? <laughs> suddenly, suddenly Sepultura is singing in Japanese. What? I don't know what Ultra 7 even is. I mean, I know it literally translates to Song of Ultra 7, but what is Ultra 7? I don't know! I... <laughs> it's just one of those... I... I... And what makes it really weird, it's, it's this really victorious, upbeat <laughs> song, and it's sort of like, okay! Okay, then I just looked at Ultra 7, and yeah, it's a, um... It's a Tokotato series in the Ultraman series in 1967. So okay they, then! So I'm wondering whether they literally just covered the opening theme, which they may well have done. Okay then! <laughs> so... Yep, the opening song is called Ultra 7 Naruto, so it probably is a cover. Well... Well okay then! Um... Simple true are confirmed for Ultraman fans, I guess? I guess. <laughs> Um, uh, unfortunately, there, there isn't actually much to really comment on because I can't... F weirdly, there's not that much information on the album. Well, it is pretty recent, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, but even so, you know how long the opening description on the Wikipedia page is? Nope. Three sentences. <laughs> Do they mostly say, Sepultura released this album on this date this year. It is the first album since the last album this year. That is pretty accurate. 14th studio <laughs> album by the Brazilian metal band Sepultura, released on January 13th, 2017. It is the band's first studio album in over three years since the mediator between head and hands must be the heart, marking the longest gap between two studio albums in their career. <laughs> three years? <laughs> If I remember correctly, it's also the first album with a new vocalist as well. Um, let's let's have a look. But you know, not having listened to their stuff in probably a decade or so, well, these stuff they released within the last decade or so. Um, let's have a look at their lineup changes. Because I think the last time I popped these in the Sepulchre was back when I you know, started getting into metal, which was like 15 years ago. So. And even then, you may manage to make me feel old. Well, yeah, that's because you started listening to metal when you were born. You pretty much came out of the womb headbanging. So the simple truth is older than both of us anyway. Um, yeah, 1985. Uh, oh, no, 84 even. Um, okay, so... Um... Yeah, I must say, if it is a new vocalist, which I think it is, then you did a pretty damn good job. Because the vocalist's album are strong. Dude. This is most definitely not the first album with the new vocalist. Is it the first good album? No, it's been the same vocalist since 98. Really? Well. Yeah. Um, of course, Max Cavalera was the vocalist for a good few years. Then he left. It was Andreas Kisser for a year, and but it was a case of he was lead guitar and vocalist for a year. Uh, and then it was Derek Green, and he's been the vocalist since 98. It is. I stand corrected, I guess. I would be standing corrected if I wasn't sitting down. Now that you know, you know that you know nothing. <laughs> ah, now I understand nothing. I understand nothing. Um, let's see. Ah, everyone involved has been on an album before, so at least I think so. Um... Uh, Derek Green, Andreas Kisser, Paulo Jr., Eloy Casagrande. Well, it turns out that the um, record producer for this particular album has worked on albums by Opeth, Catatonia, Moonspell, God Forbid, Devin Townsend, Dark Tranquility, and one of Ma. Uh, <laughs> plenty of uh, high profile bands. That could explain why it's such a varied album. Possibly. Well, well, he's been mixing on a lot of stuff as well. Mm -hmm. He's actually mixing on Deconstructing, for example. Oh, Lord. So, that would also explain why it's such a varied album. Also, mixing on Flesh God Apocalypse's new album and Metal, Baby Metal's new album. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so, yeah, I've done a lot of different stuff. Yep. But it does sound very clean production wise as well, which is nice. Because mm. clean production is always good in Little Black Metal. So. Well, Black Metal was created on the basis of poor production. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. If you can hear anything properly, it's not them. <laughs> huh. 
On February 24th, 2016, Sepultura announced on their Facebook page that they had begun writing their 14th studio album. That means that this poten- this album was potentially written in only a- in less than a year. A lot of bands do tend to write albums relatively quickly, I guess. Other ones, like <coughs> Tool, take forever. What should I <coughs> Winter Sun. Talking about Winter Sun, they're actually releasing a new album that isn't Time 2. They've shelved Time 2 for now and they're writing something else. What? Yeah, Jari mentioned it on his Facebook page, the official page the other day. So Time 2 is not happening at the moment, but there's a new album coming out this year. Or should be this year. Oh, also we might want to be keeping an eye out because they're going to be supporting the album with the Gods of Violence tour, uh, supporting Creator. Uh, uh, Well, it's Creator, Sepultura, Testament and Prong that they'll be supporting... That is a pretty solid lineup. Yeah. I mean, not the same tours, but that's sort of a... Whoa. <laughs> I mean, I've been wanting to see Prong for years, but... That's I'm really familiar with Prong, but the other three, I know, so... Hmm. Well, I'd be kind of worried if you couldn't remember Testament, as we only reviewed them a few months ago. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm reviewing Sepultura right now, so... Yeah. I'm also a uh, creator as well. Yeah. Oh, um, they'll, the Gods of Violence tour, it'll also be Soil Work and Aborted. I vaguely know of Soil Work, don't know Aborted. I know vaguely both of them, but not much of either. Yeah. Well, depending on what we can sort out, maybe we can go to one of those shows. That would be pretty cool. Although it's February to maybe March. Maybe in general. Ugh, that's a really, really bad time. Also really soon. It's one of, well, February to March, and knowing our luck, it would be in March. We've already got 568,000 other things going on. Yeah. It's sort of like, why March? Why? Why is everything March? (laughs) Although, one thing we'll have to see about is going to Catatonia in May. That would be cool. Probably Southampton is not necessarily that convenient for me, because by the time I probably won't be here. Well, it depends. I mean, if we couldn't organise stuff, maybe you'll be living in Southampton. <laughs> that would be cool. Although, that would be that would be very, very quick organisation, and, well, you and me could organise things that quickly. Not so sure about yes. Richard. <laughs> yeah. Um, stupid idiot deleting the audio files before making sure everything's all right. That was a terrible idea. Yeah. It really shouldn't be that difficult to not delete something. Which entity has like 20 terabytes of space? Yeah. There's more space than the rest of us combined, I think. Yeah. Um, but enough of that. Uh, back to the album. Um... <laughs> Rather than bitching about co-hosts. Yeah. I was talking of slightly unrelated but still related things. That album art is fantastic. Yeah. And bizarre. I love it. Well... That that's the thing. I I've always been impressed by Sepultura's artwork. Is it's very. I think the easiest way to describe it is of the id. I was thinking nihilistic, but that was too. <laughs> well, not of the id, but to use it in the most literal sense, it's very psychedelic. Hmm. Uh, for those who don't know, when I say in the most literal sense, I'm meaning. Psychedelic is a portmanteau of psyche and delun, literally meaning revealing of the psyche. Um, that's a very simplistic explanation, but you get the idea. So when I say it's quite literally psychedelic, it is very mind revealing. It is showing us sort of the concepts and images that the music influences and evokes. Uh, Trying to think of a... Well, don't need to describe it. People will see when I put the video up. But it's one of those, what the hell is going on there? Um, I'm assuming that is the machine the Messiah. (laughs) Yeah. So it's got like human parts, crab parts, butterfly parts, a fetus, mechanical bits, a whole of other stuff. I said, until you said fetus, I was sort of like, what is that thing? (laughs) It looks like a fetus to me. Yeah, I think it is. Overall, I'd say this is a very solid album. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether I'll be going back to other Sepultura albums, because I know people have been complaining about Sepultura sucking for years, but maybe I'll check them out and see whether they're right or not. I I think it's one of those, you know, that you're always going to come across 
albums that a lot of people aren't fans of. Like, um, there will be... Loads of people hate Risk by Megadeth. Um, I actually really like that album, but I can see why people have issues with it. But not being a hardcore Sepultura fan... I can't comment. It's not like if Metallica or Megadeth or Devin Townsend or Alice Cooper bring out crap albums. It's not like I can do a significant compare and contrast. Was that a kind of case of when Cryptopsy, you know, being Tech Death, decided to release an album which is pretty much deathcore, and everyone was like, what the fuck is this? Mm. I wasn't through it, and it really wasn't very good. So. Mm. When it comes to Tech Death, I'm... I do quite like Cryptopsy, so it's kind of sad to see they went that way. Eh. I don't know the band, so I can't comment. That's it. Um, yeah. It's very difficult to review an album when there's... There doesn't seem to be much information about it. Well, at least we can listen to the album and say it's a good album. Yeah. If you like, you know, whatever this is, I guess it's Tech Death with a bit of Mellow Death, maybe? A bit of Thrash on there? It's, it's kind of a mixed bag of stuff. Um, but they seem to be doing most of it in the kind of way you'd expect, just all combined together into something that sounds pretty damn great. Honestly. Here it describes it as groove metal, thrash metal and death metal, which I, I think is accurate. The whole idea behind groove metal is that it is fairly nuanced and varied. Yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah. At its core, Groove Metal takes the intensity and sonic qualities of thrash metal and plays them at mid-tempo, with most bands making only occasional forays into fast tempo. <laughs> I'd say this definitely goes into fast tempo very frequently. It does quite often, yeah. We're not like my sugar tier. But yeah, well, it certainly isn't slow with the exception of a few like interlude kind of style parts and a couple of songs. Yeah. Um, what would you give it out of five? Honestly, I'd probably say at least a four, actually. Possibly even going out to a 4.5, because as I said, there's nothing really I don't like about it, and pretty much every song I enjoyed. Yeah, I, I'd i be inclined to agree. It's, so, it's pretty much... May, I, I'd say... For, maybe Vandal's Nest is what stops it from quite being a five? Yeah, that is the one thing I said I don't... It just doesn't stand out that much compared to everything else in here. Yeah. But as a not stand out that much weak song, it's still pretty good. Yeah. So it... everything else is solid. It's very, there's nothing, it doesn't mix together like everything sounds the same like quite a few albums tend to do, especially with certain kind of, the thrash metal does do that to me a bit sometimes, like Testament did it a little bit. Mm. But this, everything stands out it has its own song and has its own identity. Yeah. Um. You said Machine Messiah would, be one of your favourites. Any other that's... Probably Machine, probably Machine Messiah and Sworn Oath, I'd say. Fair dues. I'm pretty much dead set on Iceberg Dances, mainly because of how <laughs> it just runs the gamut of all genres and is... It's very unique. Yeah. So It's right in the middle of the album as well, so it kind of just says, okay, we're going to do something different here. Yeah. Um. This is one of those cases where there w- wouldn't be any sort of rearrangements that I'd make... <laughs> I think a high quality album is well, a high rated album is everything feels in the right place. Yeah, even the bonus tracks with their inclusion feel in the right place. Yeah, so because there's a very strong ending if it isn't with the bonus track anyway. So yeah, just in case it has that kind of fade out at the end of it as well, which you no, know, it sounds like an end to an album. Yeah, it's. I'm not often a fan of fade outs for songs. I sometimes find myself going, oh, I was listening to that. I, I prefer when songs just have a proper doom. Hmm, I quite like that as well. Fade outs do have their place sometimes, and I think it works quite nicely here. Yeah, yeah. I, I think fade outs work best when they are the ending track or they're designed to flow into the next track. Hmm. Or in some cases, I've seen it where kind of they have a song fade out before kind of melodic kind of interlude flat track before going into the next thing that works really nicely I think mm-hmm. kind of it fades into an interlude but then fades into a, another big track again. when it's done right that can, really does it for me yeah uh, not much more to say uh, as I say I mean as I say it's one of those we can only really comment on the music because there's not much information luckily we're a music podcast so uh, commenting on the music is kind of the important part yeah and the music is good yeah. Anyway, um, I suppose we can finish here, really. 
Uh, no idea what the next review will be. Uh, it will be in two weeks, but what it'll be... I mean, let's face it, I only decided upon this album, like... Two days ago? Yeah, well, not even two days ago, in the last few hours. We had it as one of our possible ones a couple of days ago, at least. Yeah. It was between this and Gravedigger, and we settled upon this because... Whilst Gravedigger's new album is amazing, this we had a bit more to talk about in terms of actual musical nuance and everything like that. Hmm, agreed. Um, Maybe next week I'll mention what happens. Well, next review I'll mention what happens next week. That is, I'm going to see Black Sabbath. Ah, yes. For the last ever tour, apparently, before they do the next one. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure they've had about five last tours now. But yeah, they're they have Tony Omi and Ozzy Osbourne involved, so it's at least a good chunk of the original lineup. Yeah. Obviously, sans Dio, but well, Dio was the replacement for Ozzy. Yeah, but he's not here. To... <laughs> so, um, yeah, we still have his music. Indeed, we do. Yeah, and we still have Ozzy for now. <laughs> I-, I reckon he's just preserved. You know, he's taken so many drugs and drunk so much. That he's, his body is just pickled. Maybe he's just eaten so many bats to become a vampire. Um, anyway, that's it for this episode. Catch you on the next Once More With Feeling. It's goodbye from me. And uh, goodbye from me. Oh, Lord,